cold wind blowing me down. The ska stylings of Woodblind and percussionist Gene Kaczynski. I really just compose uh, music that I'd like to play. Narrative artist Carolyn Olson honors the minor and magical stories of human interaction. I'm hoping that my paintings can give people a little more strength and courage to be, be who you are, be a good person, forgive each other. These stories and more coming up next on The Playlist. And all the day truth always comes out. And all the day truth always comes out. Funding for The Playlist is provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Well, Woodblind is a ska band in its first year playing as a duo. So please put your hands together and welcome Woodblind. Let me roll down the river of truth, rolling along, swallowed by an idiot, crash on the rocks, and it happens for a reason. New chapter has begun. I can be true to my lover, true to my friends, true to a stranger, but it's hard to be true to yourself, never know when I'm crashing, don't matter to bruise, that I want it all repair, by the next rising Sometimes I try to swim upstream I just exhaust myself End of the day, truth always comes out Let me roll down the river of the truth Rolling along Swallowed by an idiot crash on the rocks And it happened for a reason New chapter has begun I stick my direction Follow my heart Try to love deeply And I open up my heart Sometimes I try to swim upstream I just exhaust myself End of the day, truth always comes out Let me roll down the river of the truth Rolling along Swallowed by an eddy Crash on the rocks and happy for a reason Chapter had begun. Some people build up walls, push the guardians away. It works for some people, but for me, it gets in the way. Sometimes I try to swim upstream. I just exhaust myself. End of the day, two hours comes out. Sometimes I try to swim upstream I just exhaust myself And all the day truth always comes out And all the day truth always comes out Usually it's something in life, an everyday occurrence. It's walking with my sister, it's drinking coffee with my husband, it's uh, picking beans with my kid. And it's not anything magical. It means showing up in the studio, sitting down and pulling out the paper and start. My name is Carolyn Olson, I'm a narrative artist and I live in Duluth, Minnesota. So this is a kid and his dad is talking to him, but he's going to be watching these kids. Being a narrative artist is how I have learned what the world's about.
I observe what people are doing and and paint it. I gotta get some of this everywhere. The color helps people keep their eye moving. If it was just only red down here, then you'd you'd um, be stuck there. I I love playing with how something fits on a page. I love making these shapes. Uh, things overlap, things connect to each other. This giant hand, this skinny little limbs, every little kid has. It. And this kid's got little long legs and these little hands are hanging onto this arm with the giant hand. That is, that is safety. That is a security safety right there. And this is, this, all of this connects into a big family, you know. I have a distinct style. I think it has to do with the exaggerated forms. Large hands, big feet, big bodies. I love the figure. I think it's a, a energetic. I think the figures are uh, have a little bit of sassy in them. I think everyone has that. And I think that's fun. I don't think they're being rude. I think they're just being kind of alive. I took anatomy a couple of years and I, I have drawn from life quite a bit. Um, so I know what the muscle is, I know what the bones are, I know where the joint is. This shift of her hips is balanced with the ship shift in her shoulders and her arm has to be there. Her leg has, she has to have enough on that chair or she'll fall off. You know, all of the way we shift our bodies to balance. I had to get his little paunch on there. All those things are very human. They make us feel, you know, like you could be there. I could be there. Like these are the stories of my life. These are what I see. And, and uh, all of these things demonstrating how people should live in the world in a good way, I think is a universal truth. I also feel it's all of our responsibilities to demonstrate and encourage it. And I'm a painter. That's who I, what I do. We're in the Weber Music Hall at the University of Minnesota Duluth with Gene Kaczynski and he is filling us in on the percussive movement and also what you're doing with marimbas. Yeah, I mean, I'm a marimba player, but I'm also a percussionist and I also compose and I teach at the University of Minnesota Duluth. You are a busy man <laughs> and travel a little bit. This is a voice, this marimba is a voice that, that somehow captured you. What happened? Um, you know, it uh, wasn't my first instrument I started playing drum set um, when I was really young. Uh, my dad taught me by rote how to play drum set and that's what I did for many many years until I was in high school and I saw people playing this thing and I thought it was really cool. Um, so uh, I was a little tentative because he actually had to read notes um, and I didn't know how to do that. So I decided I was going to learn how to do that and forever I was really just uh, stuck to this instrument. That is an awesome sound. <laughs> One of the things you've been recently working on is um, work for two mallets. Right, now the trend is playing four mallets. Um, ever since it was invented, it was sort of uh, um, a really great vehicle to be able to do more. And I feel that, uh, especially recently, a lot of people focus on that and there's a missed potential for uh, two mallet performance, so I decided I'm going to spend, um, I spent a long time actually research, researching what is available and wanted to um, generate some more pieces by commissioning other composers and writing a whole bunch myself. So performing is one thing, but composing is a whole another way to think. 
I'm really interested in generating new music and I really do it for myself. I don't really need to do it. I have a, a full-time teaching job at the university, which I love, and I perform a lot. So I really just compose uh, music that I'd like to play. And if anyone enjoys it, that's a bonus, you know? So uh, that's sort of where I'm at with the composition. Go something like that. <laughs> that is awesome. And so how do you know when you nail it? I don't know. People say good job. <laughs> Actually, the most important thing, something expressive to, to communicate to the audience, you know, that's the most important thing about music or any art is that you're communicating something about yourself or at least about the piece or the composer to the audience. Um, and that's m much more important than playing all the right notes at the right time, because um, there's lots of people that can do that, you know. So this is the cajon. How did you hear this voice of this instrument with a bassoon? Those two um, instruments don't seem like, you know, they would work together. Well, th that piece in particular really uh, came from Jeff Campbell, who is the head of our music department, and he plays the bassoon. He, he's an, a, an amazing player, um, but he wanted something that he can play that audience could, the, the general population could connect with, you know, pop influenced. Um, and so I wrote this piece for him, which is sort of basically like a funk bassoon solo. And I think it needed a little bit of a drum set kind of sound, but I think the drum set was too much. So the cajon was sort of perfect. And um, a lot of people love this piece and they've been playing it all over the world. So where do you think you'll be in 10 years? You know, are you going to keep making music? Are you going to well, move towards yeah, performing, I mean, uh, more composing? I like performing most of, most of all. The composing is just uh, f to facilitate the performing or, but I'll definitely be doing probably the same thing. Um, just trying to, you know, from a uh, performing aspect, trying to get better every day uh, and trying to reach the next level, um, not, not, not even knowing really what that is. And how crazy is it to have your music out in the world, being performed in Argentina and all over? It's really encouraging to see a lot of other people uh, gravitating toward it and finding a need in their programs. Um, so it's, it's encouraging to write more stuff and, and see where that goes. This is an old song I wrote, been playing a long time, but uh, since Tom Waits joined the band, it's been fun to play again. Indeed. <laughs> me 
down Cold 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 wind Blow me down Wood Blind, welcome to the playlist. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Yay. Thank you so much. I'd like you each to introduce yourself and tell me what the other one brings to this duo. <laughs> Jason, you start. I start. So I have to introduce Vaco? Yes. Okay, this is Vaco Lopisto, and um, he brings many awesome basses that work really well when you plug them in, and he understands old ska and swing and how to have a good time every time you play and camp. Uh, make a good campfire meal at the end of the night if you're <laughs> camping after a gig and can sleep in a tarp apparently in the rain. <laughs> I don't know, it's pretty adaptive. Mm. Important skills. Yeah. You want to introduce uh, this, this is guy? Jason Wusso. Uh, Jason is a generally awesome guy. <laughs> a rock and tour of Duluth, truly uh, an important figure, should be recognized. He's become a dear friend through the years. He loved music. Yeah, I've never met another man who has as much passion for music as Jason has. So it's a burning desire in him, and his, his energy is really great and fun to Brown. We, our personalities work just right, so we're, we're going to keep doing this until he tells us to quit, yeah. and then we'll keep doing it anyway. <laughs> so tell me how these, this sound came together for you guys. Well, um, I was living in Los Angeles for many, many years, and my parents are from here. I actually was born in St. Luke, so I would come back between tours or on a vacation or during the holidays to see my parents, so I would go to Beaners, which Jason owns because it's the only place my mom's coffee sucks. And <laughs> Jason's had great coffee. So <laughs> we would go and talk and he'd be playing music and I'd recognize some song. We'd strike up a conversation about music and we discovered our love for music. We'd both been in bands. We'd actually, it's kind of same conversation occurred like over a period of like 10 years. So I moved back here about a year and a half ago and we can have that conversation longer than two weeks. And in about a month in, I started bugging him to say, let's start playing, let's start playing because he loves Scott and I love Scott music and uh, nobody up here is really doing that. So I figured it might be a fun niche and be a creative outlet and you know, get to probably get the style. So how did you imprint on Scott? Because Scott is part of your, your tradition too. <laughs> I, I, way back, Matt Norby, if anyone knows that guy, he bakes che cheesecakes down at uh, Pizza Luce and we had a, uh, at, we started a band called Flux Capacitor way back in um, high school, like in 94 or 94 and he had all this old Jamaican recordings I don't know why this 17 year old from Alexandria had 1960s recordings of Desmond Decker and Toots and the Maytels and I didn't like it at first I was like this sounds crappy it's like sounded so old and but then I just started liking it and and then I went to start going to ska shows and playing and opening up for like the Scottalites and you know the pie tasters and and then that was it it's like this is fun music and Everyone's dancing. Yeah. It's a funny story. Jason was in um, Norman Topogo. I used to a band called the Royal Crown Review, and we were touring, uh, and he almost opened up for us in, in Cincinnati at a place called Bogart's. Yeah. So our pass almost crossed. It was that close. It was one day other. off. Yeah, one day off. Like, I mean, that was probably 10 years ago yeah. now. 
I was I was super excited. Vega was in this band, the Royal Crown Review, and I love that band and Big Bad Voodoo Daddy and the Cherry Pop and Daddy. So oh, the great swing scene of LA like 15, 20 years ago when the movie Swingers came out. That was really, really huge. It was a national scene. So I was fortunate enough to be a part of that and got signed to Warner Brothers and had a really good ride. And ska and swing always, they'd always build a ska band. If they couldn't get a, there's only so many swing bands. So yeah. that's why I lucked out because First Ave and 7th Street Entry would be like, well, there's only three ska bands in Minnesota. So we just got called all the time and yeah, it was so right. fun. So I asked you about the, the vocalizations. How, yeah. how do you learn to do that or where does that come from? Well, it's just called toasting. Um, you listen to it. Um, we're just making it up. Making we're it making up. our own weird noises up. Yeah, yeah. Just well, goofing around. We're trying to be a drummer, basically, called Ska Box. See, so Vaco's got, so the toast is more like, and Vaco's got the percolators. Like, yeah. like that. So, those, it's, so the percolator is what would be playing on the hi hat, like that. And the is, so it's a bass drum in the right hand part. So we're kind of imitating a drum would have, since there are only two of us. So that's where it comes from. It's called toasting. You get a lot of sound out of two guys. Well, thank you. We're trying. That's pretty cool. So tell me what you're working on next. What's the next project? Well, we got a 7-inch um, final coming out at the end of November with uh, Big Voice was our single. And we also got the chance to do the B-side with Teagle X-A. We uh, produced and covered one of his songs called The Working Man's Song. And you sang on the record. Sang on. It was really funny. Yeah. He was a great guy to work for. Super cool. And we had a really nice time. We took our time with the singles. And, really about four months from recording all the songs and mixing and going back and using a lot of critical listening and you know really checking ourselves to make sure it sounded everything was working there wasn't too much wasn't too little we were communicating the energy that we wanted to opposed to just like okay let's get it done you know so it was been a real pleasure that's what we've gotten we're touring and we're trying to tour and locally yeah. and playing a we're lot going to virginia minnesota yeah yeah <laughs> I think the sky is the limit. Thank you very much well, for you taking much. your time. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Song about Duluth. The city we love. Stranded with Sony and a broken down Dodge Where I lost my phone Outskirts of Dallas Over his keys having a fine Out back with the ski bombs underneath the heat light Everywhere I go I would want to be in my Z In this city or the unsalted sea Everywhere I go I always want to be in my Z In this city Unsalted sea And a full tank of gas yes. You gotta leave one door to see the For the next on the map Sick of street in Santa Fe The call girl bar Oh, Route 66 uh. And all those closed down motels Everywhere I go I always wanna be in my Zenith City Of the unsalted sea Everywhere I go I always wanna be in my Zenith City Unsalted sea Steps got the view if you got the cash. cash. You get your show oh, at Charlie's and a room over here. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Creek Canyon drops you down through the pines. You gotta stop by the road. You got the time. Everywhere I go, I always wanna be in my Z in this city. All the unsalted sea. Everywhere I go, I always wanna be in my Z in this city. Unsalted sea. Be 
before I head back home, I'm gonna head up north. Oh, Bridge, Montana, all those pleasure park folks around Flathead Lake. Over the butte to visit Brian, Matt, you super dollar crew. Everywhere I go, I always wanna be in my zenith city of the unsalted sea. Everywhere I go, I always wanna be in my zenith city.